So let's talk about sky replacement. So here we are. We got image. We got sky. Um, how many people in here are morally opposed to replacing skies? You have to sign a waiver. You are? Or, or do we, okay. You have to sign a waiver. That, <laughs> um, it's, it's not for everybody. Some people just refuse to do it, and that's fine. But if you want to replace a sky, uh, there's, there's some quick ways to do it. The first thing that I can tell you is that it's going to be it's going to be really tough to replace a sky on a photo that, that don't have similar color. And what I mean is, let's take, let's take, let's say I have this beach photo and this sky. There, there's no Photoshop trick in the world I can give you to make it work. Because it's not. It's, you know, the colors are different, the tone's different, I mean, everything. This was overcast. There's more, there's more to a scene than just the sky. There's the light that the sky casts on things and all those things. So you have to set yourself up with the right expectations to make it work. So in this example here, what, I, what, what struck me was, one, this was the first time this is the Big Sur and the coastline in California. Um, what struck me is it was the first time I was there where it wasn't foggy. Seriously, for like five years, whenever I went to San Francisco, I'd go get a rental car, I'd drive the two and a half hours down to Big Sur, and guess what I was met with? Like, fog to the point you can't see your hand here. I've never even taken my camera out of the bag because you couldn't see anything. It'd be sunny and then fog. So this was the first time. But what struck me was, I, you know, I, of course, the mother nature being what she is, she wasn't going to give me no fog and a beautiful sky. So... I got just orange. Um, I knew I had, I went looking through my sky library and I knew I had this photo. So what we're looking at is, is you're looking for a sky with a sun or a sunset that's in relatively the same place, okay? I wouldn't want, if the sun was going down over here, I wouldn't want to take that photo unless I flipped it to put it over there. So you want the sun in the relatively the same place. So what we'll do is we're gonna select both photos, uh, go photo, Edit in. Uh, this this point is this is one of those times where we need Photoshop. All right. Um, if you go down here to the bottom, if you select two photos, you can edit them as layers in Photoshop. So I'm going to edit as layers. By the one, any uh, I, by the way, by the one, any on one users out there? So they have a layers a layers component there. You could jump into layers and do the same thing as well. So now we get into Photoshop, and we've got two layers on top of each other. I'm going to flip-flop them so that my sky is on top and that my regular scene is on the bottom. And then now I need to make a selection. So let's go to the bottom one. Let's hide the top one. I'm going to take our quick selection tool and just make a real quick, dirty selection. You guys saw this in the last class. If you didn't see this in the last class, uh, the best selection technology in Photoshop is hidden under this little Refine Edge button uh, right here at the top. So click Refine Edge, and then you can choose to see on black, on white. You could see it on black and white. I'll go on white. We have our little brush tool. Um, the way the brush tool works is you just paint. And I, it's, it's haphazard. I mean, I just paint. I have no idea. And I'll even paint right along the edge. All right, so let's zoom into that just because I think you got to see the selection. That's before. That's after. That's good for just a swipe of a brush. And this is where black and white helps sometimes too. You can see it. All right. So let's go ahead and make our selection. Click OK. And now we have our sky. Back from the basics class, if you remember, um, if I have a selection active and I click the layer mask icon, whatever selected stays. So if I click the layer mask icon, that selection stays. It hides everything else. Okay. Now, we got some work to do because our sky is not in the right place. So easy fix. I can move it. What's going to happen if I move it? I want to show you. So that's not quite what we want, right? Because 
I know that there's a better part of the sky, but it's moving the whole thing. Why is it doing that? It's doing that because the image is linked to the mask. That's what that little lock means. Image is linked to the mask. So if I turn that off, just click on it, now I can move it around. Okay, it's a little bit too small too. You can see some of the edge over there. So just go to edit, free transform. Make it a little bit bigger. All right, and uh, pretty darn good. I'm gonna zoom in, there's one little fix we can do, but that's before, that's after. And if you want to, reduce the opacity. You help blend it in a little bit. But the reason why this works, guys, is because there's some similar color tones in there. And that's, that's the only way that you're gonna get one sky into another. It's not gonna work any other way. Uh, there is a, a little, little bit of a fringe happening over here. Um, in the basics class, I showed you a quick, easy way to get rid of it. Um, I believe you had asked about, when I was in the Refine Edge dialog box, you'd asked about uh, some of the sliders in there in the other class. So let's say, um, if you go in here, you're gonna see, if I go to my window properties, the properties dialog box will let me go adjust my selection, okay? So if I open up Mask Edge, it opens up that same Refine Edge dialog box. This is probably one of the few times where some of these sliders can come in, but that Shift Edge one is one of the ones that can work here, so I can shift the edge. See it? Here, I'll go the other way, you can see the halo, but if I shift it, I can get rid of it. That's before, that's after. So that'll help just kind of shift it inward a little bit to get rid of some of those edges. But uh, that is, uh, that's your sky replacement. Again, it's, it's one of those things, it's not gonna work on every photo. You need the right photos for it.